Hello, I'm Tyrone Jordan, an analyst with the Bureau of Information Systems, and I would like to tell you a little bit about the new SRP Preferred ID GIS layer. This layer identifies active, pending, and closed site remediation cases with known or suspected contamination. It provides detailed information about each specific case, including its status and if a licensed site remediation professional, or LSRP, or an NJDEP program is handling the case. The tool also identifies the cases overseen by NJDEP as publicly funded, traditional oversight, unregulated heating oil tank, more commonly known as UHOT cases, or direct oversight. Various case types associated with the SRP case, such as National Priority Listing, or MPL, coal gas, chromite ore processing residue, more commonly referred to as COBRA, and cases triggered via the Industrial Site Recovery Act, or ISRA, are also incorporated. Annual remediation fee categories are covered as well, which allow anyone to quickly determine the number of areas of concern, or AOCs, being investigated and whether media other than soil has been impacted. We've also included information about institutional controls associated with the cases, such as classification exception areas, or CEAs, and deed notices, and so much more. We've added a related table that provides detailed information about the activities associated with the given SRP case, including the activity type and status, the status of the remedial investigation, or RI, and whether the remedial action to address the contamination associated with this activity has been completed. Now, we'll take a look at how you can view our SRP preferred ID GIS layer. Remember, a GIS layer is a way of presenting information about a particular subject and a map display. First, type nj.gov funch slash DEP funch slash SRP into your computer or smartphone browser to get into the site remediation website. Once the web page opens, click on the community corner link on the upper left side. That will open our community corner web page where you can Click on the SRP Preferred ID GIS layer instructions link to find detailed information about our SRP Preferred ID GIS layer. We'll, we'll start with the first figure. As you can see, SRP cases have been broken out with symbols in five categories. Active cases, active unregulated heating oil tank or UHOT, remedial action permit, RAP, post remedial cases, closed cases, and pending cases. The RIP post-NFA cases are ones that have been closed in conjunction with the issuance of an institutional control, such as a CEA or deed notice. To view the SRP ID layer in a map, you'll need to launch the NJDEP Site Remediation Profile web mapping application by clicking on the map link in the Community Corner webpage. Before we open the app and discuss how to view the SRP Preferred ID layer in the app, I'd like to provide a couple of caveats concerning the SRP Preferred ID layer. There are a small percentage of cases in the, in the DEP database that do not have locational coordinates, so they cannot be displayed in the GIS layer. Linear construction and closed UHI cases are also not included. Information concerning SRP cases not included in this layer can be found through the site remediation data miner reports. Now, Joe Stefanoni will walk you through how to use the web mapping application to view the SRP preferred IDGIS layer, as detailed in the remainder of the SRP preferred IDGIS layer instructions. Hi, I'm Joe Stefanoni, a GIS specialist with the NJDP Site Remediation Program. Let's pick up where Tyrone left off with the NJDP Site Remediation Profile web mapping application. This application can be opened either from the Site Remediation Community Corner webpage 
or directly from the site remediation homepage, as I'm now demonstrating. When you first open the site remediation profile, you'll see a splash screen with information about the application. You can close the splash screen by clicking OK. You also have a box on the right called About This App that provides additional information about using the app, such as links for users' guides with guidance for using the application, descriptions of the various GIS layers provided in the application, and instructional videos for using the various features within the application. You can close this screen by clicking the X in the upper right-hand corner of the box. To view the SRP Preferred ID layer, click on the layer list icon to expand it. Then click on Sites and Facilities, and finally click in the box for SRP Preferred ID to turn on this GIS layer. I'm also going to turn off the Known Contaminated Sites layer by unchecking the box so it doesn't interfere with viewing the SRP Preferred ID layer. By clicking on the little triangle to the left of the SRP Preferred ID checkbox, you'll be able to see the symbols associated with the SRP Preferred ID layer. The SRP Preferred ID layer does not display at this scale, so you'll need to zoom in using your mouse wheel until you have zoomed in close enough for the SRP Preferred ID layer to display. You can also search for a specific SRP Preferred ID case if you have the Preferred ID number a unique identifier. I am going to use the search tool to find the SRP case for the Williams property. First, I click on the search tool, then I choose to search by SRP preferred ID and enter the preferred ID number. Next, I click search more to retrieve the correct SRP case, and finally I hit apply to take me to the actual location of, the, of that case. Now I'm going to open up the pop-up for this case by clicking on the orange and black symbol on the map. The data presented about the SRP case in the pop-up contains detailed information about the SRP case. For this particular case, the pop-up indicates it is a publicly funded case with an MPL or Superfund case type and an ongoing classification exception area or CEA among other details. There are also links in the pop-up to view the case location in Google Maps and to run data miner reports to retrieve information about the case. Clicking on the View Case Location in Google Maps link will open Google Maps at the location of the SRP case. From there, you can view the case location in Google Maps and you can also use Google Street View. Clicking on the Data Miner Report links will generate a report to provide you with detailed information about the SRP case. This information can then be converted to a PDF or Excel file. The report can also be printed out or sent as an attachment in an email. If you scroll down to the bottom of the pop-up box, you'll see a related table that you can click on to find information about the activities associated with the SRP case. This particular case has three activities associated with it, which you can click on for additional information about each of these activities. There is a second related table from there that will display LSRP contact information for the LSRP associated with an active SRP case, if applicable. Since this is a publicly funded case, there is no LSRP associated with this case. Hopefully, with the help of this video, you are now able to use the SRP Preferred ID GIS layer in the Site Remediation Profile web mapping app and view detailed information about a particular site remediation case through the pop-up.